When I was 14, I lost my purpose for being, and I fell into this huge depressed state for about four years before I could come out of it and feel happy again. It all started when I went to school, and it was a middle school. Before this, I was most of the time homeschooled and really liked it. It gave me the freedom to learn the way I learn. When I went to school, everything changed. Teachers were like, this kid is wild. And they said I had ADD and the best way to handle that is to give me some, like this thing called Ritalin, uh, which was a disaster in the long run for me. I got so depressed because they said I had all these learning disabilities and if I went and got tested again, they'd still claim I still have those. Uh, I have a hard time reading. I think I have some type of dyslexia, uh, ADD, and I get this huge anxiety, like loads amount of anxiety when I open a textbook of any kind. Just like, I can't handle textbooks. They just, especially if it's like anything past third, third edition. So it's like if it's a six, edi a six edition textbook, drives me insane. The information in it is just chaotic. But anyway, that's besides the point. My deepest, like lowest moment was at like one o'clock in the morning, still trying to get some math problems done. Any other day, I could have solved these problems really easy, because they were easy problems. But for some reason that day, my mind just stopped working. And it didn't start working until like four or five years after that actually, it just stopped altogether working. I started bawling because I could not solve these problems. I wanted to do them, I did, but I couldn't. And go to school, come back home and do nothing but this, ho this homework, and then go to sleep, go to school again and start the day all over. And that was the worst nightmare of my life. A lot of people today go through that. That's what they experience on a daily basis. And uh, I commend you for handling it. <laughs> I couldn't. I, I couldn't handle that. It literally drove me insane. And, and I was very depressed. My mom took me out of school after that. And then we moved. And so life completely changed again. I refused to take Ritalin at that point. Which also put me in this huge, like, deep spiral because um, Ritalin controls your emotions and helps you focus and it uses up basically all these chemicals it gives your brain more chemicals um, that it needs and it makes your brain think oh I don't need to produce these chemicals anymore because I'm getting them somewhere else and uh, so when I was no longer taking Ritalin I wasn't getting those happy chemicals anymore that caused a huge drop in my emotions. So the next four years I struggled with um, overcoming these this, this depression that I was having and I found four or five things that helped me overcome that depression. The first one are some core beliefs that I, I chose to believe no matter what. Number one is I have a purpose in life. Even even when I am depressed and I feel like life is miserable and all has gone wrong, I believe I have purpose, that I can make it, that there's a reason for me being here and I need to be patient enough to find that. I am a son of God, so I, I do believe in God. I believe that being a son of God means that I have potential, I have great potential and I have the gift to be as talented and as inspirational and as like the ability to have and be anything and everything that God can give me that that he is because as because if I'm his his son then one day I could be like him I can do anything with time and patience so these were my core beliefs, and they still are my core beliefs. Step two is exercise. I found that through exercise, I could find some form of relief and peace. There's a lot of science proven uh, that proves that 
there's a, endorphins and things that go through the body when you exercise. So I went running in the morning and I did push-ups at night. That was my extent of exercise. <laughs> uh, and I kept that up for about three, four years. Every, every night I would do one more push-up than, than the night before, or at least try to. I got up to 200 push-ups before I stopped, or stopped doing one more every night. It kind of became a long thing, so 200 was enough for me. Number three is I recorded every thought. I believed, and I still believe strongly, that I can control my emotions by what I choose to think about. And it's a combination of what I choose to think about that directs my mood. And so, if that's the case, then I need to know what I'm thinking about. So I created what I call my book of thoughts. And I've explained this a little bit before. So this right here is my book of thoughts that I keep now. This right here was the first one <laughs> that I started. It's literally keeping track of all my thoughts. So this is what it looked like on the inside. I have all these um, symbols. I work in symbols and things like that. It's right here. It shows a little bit more of the symbols that I work with now. So this is, this is after 14 years of, of uh, writing down my thoughts. These are my core thoughts and desires that I want to accomplish in my lifetime. So all my thoughts pertain to one of these things. And if it doesn't pertain to one of these things, then it's probably a negative thought and I should stop thinking about it, or it's a thought that's not really pertinent to what I should be doing in life. Unless it brings me joy, or it pertains to one of these things, I choose not to think about it. Four, I study a lot. I was, I'm determined to overcome everything that I experience and and be better for it. So I read a lot of self-help books and spiritual books and things like that. My favorites, so I can get through my books faster, I listen to them on Audible and I review them all the time. These are my favorite books. I have a lot of them now, a lot, because I've been doing this for many years and there's a handful of them that I review on a regular basis that I love, like um, The Art of Charm, uh, Ready, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, Made to Stick, Ready for Anything by David Allen, uh, there was this, the, happy, the Happiness of Advantage. These are some of my staples. I review those ones on a regular basis because I find a lot of value in them. The reason why I listen to them is two. One, I can absorb it better, absorb things better when I hear them than when I read them. And two is because it helps me to control the voices inside my head. It's hard to control our voices. And when I have a hard time controlling the voice inside my head and it's getting really negative and self-talk, negative self-talk, I turn on one of my books. It's like, I don't need to listen to you. I'm listening to someone else that's more inspirational. I listen to those books anytime I travel or anytime I feel negative or anything like that. Uh, and it helps me to stay focused and positive in the direction that I should be going. And lastly, I always look for opportunities to serve because in the service of others, you find clarity in your own purpose. I really hope this helps you guys because it's something that's helped me in the last 14 years of my life. And uh, I encourage anyone, if you have any questions on or advice on depression, how to overcome depression, um, share it in the comments below. Um, thanks for watching. Cheers.